Shahnama Stories, The Legendary Horses of Iran. Throughout history, Iranians have celebrated the horse in their art and literature. Their importance and significant role in heroic and historical events is on ample view in Persian miniature painting. Ancient Persia was the world's cradle of horse breeding, and Iran has long been home to a wide range of purebred horses, including the Caspian and the Asil, that are mentioned in historical documents like Marco Polo's travel log that names Iran as having the world's most beautiful and expensive horses. Horse breeding was one of the hobbies in ancient Persia, and widely practiced under Cyrus the Great. The native Persian horse, that is only one of Iran's numerous breeds, is one of the most famous and oldest in the world. It has unique features and is regarded as the ancestor of all original and top breed horses today. Depending on the geographical area, native Persian horses have different features, and like today, were available in all colors. The horse native to the Iranian plateau is not very big in size, but is very strong and sturdy. Iranian horses have always been used for difficult tasks, such as battles or passing through long and rough terrain. Although armored horses have become a symbol of European Middle Ages chivalry and the era of knights, The practice of armoring or barding of horses was first extensively developed under the Parthians, a major Iranian political and cultural power in the 3rd century CE. After Alexander the Great's conquest of the Persian Empire, it made its way into European military practices via the Seleucid and later Byzantine empires. Heavily equipped, Horses could thus move forward like an armored tank, defeating the enemy's infantry. It was with such sophisticated war machinery that the Sasanians were able to fight the Romans for almost 400 years. The most abundant source of information about horse armor comes from the Shahnameh, that makes frequent mention of Bargos Tovan, horse armor being used by its heroes both Iranian and Turanian. Furthermore, the Shahnameh gives many additional details concerning the appearance, structure and usage of the equipment, as well as how it was stored and then distributed in time of need. While seemingly cumbersome, in a desperate situation, a cavalryman could cut the straps which secured a Bargostovan, allowing it to fall to the ground so that his horse could run faster and tire less. In the Shahnameh, the later Sasanian monarch Khosrow II escaped from the usurper Bahram Chubin in this way. The two main subjects of Persian miniature painting are Razm va Bazm, battle and feast, both of which showcase the extraordinary importance of the horse in the life of Iranians. Artists delighted in painting battle scenes where they could exhibit the mesmerizing array of exquisite horse finery, from bejeweled bridles and armor to gold embroidered saddles. Similarly, horses and their paraphernalia were an integral part of the diplomatic exchange of rare and expensive gifts, in particular between the Safavids and the Ottomans. By extension, the game of polo, chogan in Persian, originated in Iran over 2,000 years ago. Horse riding was one of the most important skills that Iranians were expected to be proficient in. And at first, polo was a training game for cavalry units, usually the king's guard or other elite troops. It had great royal patronage, and as part of education for the ruling class, it became a national sport played extensively by the nobility. 
Along with hunting on horseback, polo was one of the favorite and important pastimes of Iranian kings, and at the court of the Sasanian Empire that ruled from 224 to 651 CE, the Emperor Shahpur II learned to play when he was seven years old. Women, as well as men, played the game, as indicated by references to the queen and her ladies engaging King Khosrow Parviz, also known as Khosrow II, and his courtiers in the 6th century CE. As we saw in a previous video, polo was played in Naqsh Jahan Square in Esfahan, built by Shah Abbas the Great in the 17th century, where he watched the games from the balcony of his Aligapu Palace. Persian literature and art give the richest portrayals of polo in antiquity. In his Shahnameh, Ferdowsi gives a number of accounts of royal chogan tournaments, such as the international match between Iran and its arch-enemy Turan in present-day Central Asia, and praises the skills of the champions on the field. While each had his own special charger, there are amongst them some that are of particular renown. The first of the three most famous horses of Persian literature is Shabdiz, the legendary black stallion of the aforementioned Sasanian king Khosrow II, who ruled from 590 to 628 CE. Shabdiz, which means night-coloured, was said to be the world's fastest horse. In Nezami's romantic epic Khosrow and Shirin, it is Khosrow's beloved Shabdiz that brings his future bride Shirin to meet him after she has fallen in love with Khosrow's portrait. The king so loved the steed that he had vowed to execute anyone that brought him the news of his death. And so legend has it that upon Shabdiz's death, no one dared reveal it to the king. To resolve the issue, the famed chief court musician and minstrel Barbod devised a way to avert the king's anger. He sang a sad song, and when Khosrow, understanding the purpose of the song, stated, Shabdiz is dead, Barbod responded, Yes, and it is your majesty who announced it, thereby averting the possibility of blame and death. In this, the most illustrated scene of the romance that depicts Khosrow coming upon the bathing Shirin, it is Shabdiz that stands guard next to the pool and here personifies Shirin's surprise by his startled neigh as the rock spirits communicate the intimacy of the scene by turning away in blushing embarrassment. shabrang e the noble-born Shabrang, meaning colour of the night, was the horse of the tragic prince Siovash, the son of the volatile king Kekovus, whose follies were encountered during Rostam's half Khan. When he spurned the advances of his stepmother Sudabe, she accused him of making amorous advances towards her, thus enraging the king. In a trial of righteousness to prove his innocence, the prince, dressed in white astride his jet-black stallion, cuts a courageous and dashing figure as he passes unscathed through the fiery fire that envelops them. After his death, his son Ke Khosro, whom we met when he besieged the Deves of Bahman Castle, inherited the mythical horse. Finally, the most famous horse of Persian mythology and literature is, of course, Rakhsh, meaning luminous, who is the faithful steed of the hero Rostam in the Shahnameh. As the ultimate champion, Rostam was determined to find a horse to match his own strength and stamina. After several days of searching, he spotted a mighty young colt with the chest and shoulders of a lion, strong as an elephant, hooves of steel, and skin 
bright and dappled as though flecked with petals of red roses on saffron. Having subdued the colt, Rustam asked for the horse's price. The herdsman replied, If you are Rustam, then mount him and defend the land of Iran. The price of this horse is Iran itself, and mounted on his back, you will be the world's saviour. No one but Rostam ever rode Rach, who in turn recognised no other master. Indeed, he is the only horse that Rostam could ride, since his great strength and weight would kill other horses. As we saw previously in the Seven Labours, this wondrous stallion not only served Rostam faithfully, but saved him from death on more than one occasion. Raksha's intelligence and courage became particularly apparent during the first and third of the seven ordeals. As we have been discussing, emotion in Persian miniature painting is expressed through the vegetation rather than the people. It is also similarly captured by the horses who communicate a range of reactions to the events in the story. In this extraordinary painting, a young Rostam astride an armoured Rach pierces and lifts his opponent up with his lance. As the unfortunate chubby rider flails about in the air, none expresses his fright better than his astounded black stallion that turns and gawks at the sudden lightness on his back. Due to divine favour protecting Rostam, Rach lived an unusually long life. The tender affection of the hero for his horse and the deep bond between them is never more heart-wrenching than their death together at the hands of Rostam's jealous half-brother Shagod, who laid a trap in their way by digging a deep well studded with poisoned swords and spears. Rostam, the invincible hero of the Shahnameh, fell into the pit and died with Rach, his companion, in life and death, both pierced with arrows. In this poignant illustration, Rach lies impaled at the bottom of the well, while an elderly, bleeding Rostam musters his remaining strength to shoot Shahad before dying himself.